So I get asked a question occasionally, and it's with regards to my collection. And it goes, why do I only buy football shirts with tags? And once I bought them, why do I keep them attached? And after all, it's kind of a reasonable question. Football shirts are designed with the intention of them to be worn, whether you're a fan or a player. It's the perfect way to show the allegiance to the club you support. And as you can tell from the shirt that I'm wearing, not every shirt do I buy do I keep the tags attached and hide away uh, from the world. Um, every single Chelsea shirt that I own uh, has or is being worn by me. And it's not just Chelsea shirts. I have the uh, odd shirt that I also wear casually as an alternative to the Chelsea shirts. However, when I decided to create a dedicated football shirt collection, I decided that the uh, only football shirts that I would buy are ones that are brand new with tags and have followed that ruling ever since. There are many reasons why I decided this and I will explain to them to you in this video. So the first thing to do is to take into account my personality and preferences. I have collected toys and memorabilia all my life. When I was younger, I collected stickers, trading cards, wrestling figures and Hot Wheels. Those were some of my primary interests back then. As I grew older, I branched out into Lego, playing cards and autographs. And as I sit here today, I collect trading cards once again. I collect coins and of course I collect football shirts. When I was younger, I was more interested in playing with the collectibles than keeping them in mint condition. However, as I've got older, I've taken more of an interest in the condition than the practical use of them. I think most people who grew up in the initial Pokemon craze can relate to looking back and thinking about how much their collection would be worth these days if they hadn't thrown or given them away. Now, I didn't have the famous Charizard card that everyone goes crazy about, but I'm pretty certain I had most of the base set. Now, imagine if I'd kept them all in mint condition. I'd be able to sell them and buy more football shirts. I experienced the same notion when I was searching the internet for vintage football shirts. I was looking back at Chelsea shirts that were released prior to me becoming a fan. While scouring through the internet, I was stumbling across some of the earliest Chelsea shirts that I owned and was amazed by how much these shirts were being bought and sold for. Now, of course, I wasn't ever going to sell my Chelsea shirts, but it did turn on a switch in my head. Maybe I should start collecting football shirts. After all, football is my biggest passion. And other than spending a fleeting moment of collecting what were most likely forged autographs, I hadn't really turned my passion into a hobby. So now that I've decided to collect football shirts, it's time to figure out what type of collection I wanted. Maybe I wanted to collect classic football shirts. Maybe I only wanted to focus on a particular league or nation or club or manufacturer or year. Whatever it was that I decided, I knew it had to be unique and different. Similar to how the culture is today, most people back then were still only buying older football shirts. There certainly weren't that many people buying the newer releases and not many people collecting them and keeping them brand new with tags. This then seemed like the perfect way to start something different and interesting. And plus it fitted in well with how I collected my other items. The coins I have are all brand new and uncirculated, so they're all very shiny. And the trading cards that I keep are sealed in their booster boxes. So on the 30th of September 2014, I bought my first four football shirts and the collection began. At first, there certainly was a great urge to remove the tags and wear them the next time I was due to play five aside. I did get a quite a bit of a satisfaction when turning up wearing a football shirt, especially if it was for some obscure club. However, this feeling quickly subsided as the number of shirts I owned increased. By the end of 2014, I had bought 19 football shirts and had been gifted a few more. As 2015 rolled around, I knew that I really wanted to get into the football shirt collecting world and spent most of my time online reading about tips and tricks of the trade. Now, I would argue that football shirt collecting in 2015 was still in its relative infancy. So the resources online that were easily accessible and readily available weren't as plentiful as they are today. And that's Part of the reason why I created my own website, it was a place to collate all the information that I had uh, gathered and put it in one fixed place. There was one primary aspect that definitely caught my attention, and it was the increasing abundance of football shirts that were fake and being sold on the internet. At this point in my life, I didn't have a particularly high budget to spend on football shirts. 
So it was vitally important that the small amount of money I did have was spent on authentic football shirts and not the fakes that were constantly popping up everywhere. Now, I'm not afraid to mention that uh, in the early days, I did fall foul to a few of these fakes, especially when buying from eBay. Uh, when you're a collector on a smaller budget, you can see that uh, these lower prices can be quite alluring. Uh, looking back, I can see quite plain as day that they are fakes. Uh, the, some of the prices were quite obviously too good to be true. Most of the time, I was able to get my money back. Uh, but on the odd occasion, I had to cut my losses, save up, and try again later. And this made me uh, more determined to become an expert in how to spot fakes when looking to buy football shirts. In reality, this is an impossible task to master. Even with six and a half years of experience, I can't guarantee that if you showed me a really good fake and an authentic shirt, that I can distinguish between the both. Uh, sometimes it's quite easy, but sometimes it is very tricky. However, I've picked up some of the common tricks that I can use to help uh, distinguish between fakes. Uh, one of these is to look on the internal tags, the wash tags, and usually there is a little code. If you type that code into Google Images and then search, if the results come up with the shirt that you are looking to purchase, then more than likely that shirt is legitimate. So for example, if we take this Corinthian shirt and take a look at the code present and type it into Google, you can see that it comes up with a decent amount of images, which means that the shirt is legitimate. Of course, I know that it's legitimate because I bought it from a legitimate retailer. However, this trick doesn't always work for every manufacturer as not all of them have these codes attached to the internal tags. This then means you've lost one of your main tools against the battle or against football shirts. And this is where the manufacturing swinging tags come into play. Similar to the ones on the inside, they can most likely have a unique code that you can once again Google, and if a picture of the shirt appears, that more than likely makes the shirt authentic. Now, for some manufacturers, the codes will be the same on the external tags as they are on the internal tags. However, it is the manufacturers that don't have the internal tags where this really comes into play. Now, let's look at this Macron Santiago Wanderers shirt. Macron don't have a unique code on the internal tag. However, on the swinging tag, they do. So if we Google this code, you can see here that there are a number of photographs that show this shirt. Now, there aren't as many as shown on the Corinthian shirt, and that really comes down to the popularity of the jersey. If only a small number of retailers stock it, then the amount of Google images that will appear will be less. Which means it is possible that you could be looking at a legitimate shirt, but because the club is so unique and obscure that there is literally no online presence anywhere other than the shirt that you are looking to buy. An example of this would be this Torpedo Moscow shirt. If we look at the code attached to the tag on this one and Google it, you will see it only brings up a few images. And those images are from my website, incidentally. Uh, which is fair enough because I know that this shirt is legitimate. So if you have a shirt with the same tags and the same code, then you can guarantee it's legitimate also. However, imagine if I didn't have a website, then this shirt, which I know is legitimate, would have literally no presence online. So if you're trying to find one and you type in the code and you don't see a result, you might think it's fake, but in reality, it's legit. So as you can see, this is where only buying football shirts with tags attached can really be a benefit. Now, most of the time I only buy from major retailers anyway, so I can guarantee the shirt's authenticity. However, on the odd occasion where I buy from eBay or other fellow collectors, I use the codes and the presence of the tags to my advantage and see if they set off any red flags. I can't imagine how stressful it must be for football shirt collectors who buy football shirts in varying levels of condition, especially if you are keen on them being authentic and legitimate. Now, when it comes to football shirts, those that are brand new with tags are seen to be the best condition a shirt can be. And like with any collectible, the better the condition, the more value it can hold. I'll admit that the perceived value of my football shirts is a secondary concern, However, as my collection expands, I can't help but think about the uh, potential value of the shirts later down the line. Having kept the tags on all of my shirts certainly has put me in a great position to reap all the benefits if I decide to sell them later down the line. Like with any investment, there's no guarantee that the price will increase though. In fact, it's quite possible that the price of football shirts could crash into the ground. And that's why I would uh, like to emphasize that I'm not a financial advisor and encourage you not to make any life altering decisions based on investing in football shirts. 
Now, I'm not able to fully analyze the football shirt market in a few minutes, but if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about that, then I'm more than happy to make a video about it. So I'll just focus on a couple of shirts that I own, and that should give you an idea of what you can expect if you decide to collect football shirts that are brand new with tags. Let's use the four shirts I mentioned earlier, as they are the oldest shirts in my collection, and I have had the longest time to accrue or lose value. I'm going to be using classic football shirts as a point of reference with regards to the pricing. I know some people believe that they uh, overinflate the prices, but I think for a rough guideline, uh, it's the best place to use because they have the majority of the shirts. And with me buying from them initially, I think it just sort of completes it all. First, we have the 2008-2009 Home AEK Athens shirt. I purchased this for £11.99. Currently, Classic Football shirts have a version of this uh, shirt for sale, and that goes for £34.99. Now, this shirt is only in excellent condition, which is still pretty decent, but of course, mine is brand new with tags. So the way I differentiate between uh, excellent and brand new with tags is quite simple. I just simply just add £5 extra to value. Uh, it's not really scientific and there's no basis on it, but I feel like if I do it across the entire board, sometimes it might be uh, underselling it and sometimes it might be overselling it. Generally, there's, there's that sort of price difference when I'm looking online to buy them anyway. So uh, I think for this anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a decent way of determining the difference. Uh, so based on that, I have the shirt valued at £39.99. The second shirt is the Hanover 96 home shirt from 2006-2007. Again, I bought it for £11.99. Currently, uh, classic football shirts have one for sale uh, for £44.99, uh, and it's an extra large this time. So similar to the condition, if a shirt doesn't fall within small to large, I always generally uh, add another £5 onto the value. Uh, I would sort of suggest small to larger than primary sizes, though I've kind of seen a lot more interest in extra large shirts so maybe I should start uh, thinking about adding that to the list also. So based on the sizing and the condition, I have this shirt down valued at £54.99. The third shirt is the Benidorm CF shirt that I bought for the eye-watering price of £12.99. Now, unfortunately, classic football shirts don't actually have a version of this shirt for sale on their website at the moment. Never fear though, I like to keep a record of any listing that appears on classic football shirts for any of these shirts that I have in my collection. So on the 10th of Feb 2019, I stumbled across a listing for that particular shirt and it was for sale for £44.99. Now that listing has disappeared and I can't access the link anymore, so one can only assume that the shirt has sold. So without guaranteeing what the price was, I'm just going to use that figure as it probably makes sense for that to be the final sale price. Finally, we have this 2011-2012 home shirt for Sturm Graz. I bought this also for £12.99. Currently, classic football shirts have a version of this um, for sale. However, it doesn't have the sponsor on the front, or should I say sponsors. Um, what I usually do for this is I simply add another £5 again. Uh, the version of the shirt that they have for sale is long sleeves, and I'm going to uh, leave that for another video. Um, so I'm not going to affect the value based on that. So currently I have it at a value of £54.99. So the cost of my first ever purchase was £49.96 and the potential current value is £195.96, roughly four times my rate of investment. Like I said, these are rough estimations and should only be used as a guideline, uh, but at least gives you an idea of what's possible in what is kind of only a really a, a short period of time. It's not quite Bitcoin level investment returns, but it's still decent nonetheless. Now you're going to struggle to find on classic football shirts like the ones in my first uh, ever order. Uh, entry level prices for football shirts has increased from 11, 12 pounds to I would say about 20 to 23 pounds. Uh, occasionally some will appear, but mostly they fall into that uh, bracket. Now I want to make it clear that it's not just brand new tag shirts that increase in value. All shirts will increase in value unless you absolutely destroy them. If you look at some of the examples I just rolled off, some of them were in excellent condition, but they didn't have their tags attached, and the value of the shirt was still two, three, four times the, uh, the, the price of my initial outlay. So it's very possible that you could take the tags off, wear it occasionally, and still have a decent return on investment. 
The current market trend seems to be positive and that is for any condition or any age of the football shirt. But that's it, a few reasons as to why I buy only shirts with tags attached. I hope you enjoyed this different style of video and if you've got any further questions please don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. I'll either answer them then or maybe I could do another video based on whatever it is you are asking. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.